So now what we'll do is we'll get into the demonstration. Uh, this demonstration will allow us to show on-prem VMware workload that we will add to an existing account and already have a SAS connector set up for, allowing us to show all the features. Now we're looking at the overall Helios dashboard for Data Protect as a service. And you can see some of the pertinent information available to you just from the dashboard. Some things listed for your data usage is the capacity you purchased. Uh, you could see how much of the particular capacity you're using. Um, you can also see things like the protection coverage and status to see how much you're protecting simultaneously and the status of objects, success rates you've had over the last few days. Now, if we go over here, you can see um, the overall activity, which allows you to change from 24 hours, seven days, or 30 days. You can see the SAS connections to see how many are healthy or unhealthy. This may signal if you need to redeploy a connector uh, or something like that. Uh, we can also see alerts happening within the system. So if you have any critical warning or informational alerts. If we look in the upper right hand corner, we can see the quick buttons. Uh, we can see recover, you know, options for performing a recovery or protecting uh, various workloads for data protect as a service. Now, first things first, what we're gonna do is take a look at policies. Now, policies are the first things you must double check uh, because they're the most important thing for determining your RPOs and RTOs. So we're gonna go over and click on policies. And we're gonna wait, okay. So the policies have loaded and so what this allows us to do is determine your backup windows. So how frequently are you going to back up your, your workloads? Um, how long will you retain that information within backup as a service? So in this particular case, we're gonna use the TM policy uh, created by one of my teammates. And it's got a backup window of every six hours and a retention of every two weeks. So we've already got that created. We can go through and create our own policy if we want to, but for this demo, we'll be using the existing uh, TM policy. Next, we're gonna take a look at our sources. So this is important for us because this determines what workloads we're gonna be performing the backup and recovery capabilities from. Uh, so we've got a few resources already listed out here. You can see that I have my vCenter instance um, and it's available in different regions, which is particularly unique because it gives you the ability to protect your data from a worldwide perspective. Um, this allows you if you're in Europe, uh, you have the ability to keep your data in that European location. You've got the ability to use multiple European regions as far as AWS is concerned. You can see here that I've got uh, Canada, Europe, uh, US East, North, uh, and Ohio as locations where I can push this data. And note, we also have the ability to use regions on uh, Azure uh, data plane as well. So with that, I'm going to uh, go ahead and protect some additional virtual machines in the uh, U.S. East North Virginia region. So to do that, I need to click on this particular uh, vCenter source. So we're going to pick this vCenter source for U.S. East North Virginia. Uh, this gives us a rundown of uh, multiple listings. Um, whether I want a physical hierarchy or a folder hierarchy, um, or just a straight VM listing. So I'm going to click on a VM listing, which is already selected. And uh, also there's tags, if there are any particular tags that I want to ensure are protected. So in my case, what I'm going to do is click in the search and we're going to search for some window app servers. And so let me go ahead and type in win dash app. And you can see that 
I found some Windows app servers here that I want to protect via the data protection as a service. Uh, next, I'm going to select Windows app 03 and 4. Because these are the production servers I need to protect. Notice that a protect button appeared just below the protection status right here. This allows us to initiate the workflow for protection really easily. So let's go ahead and hit protect. So notice under add objects, we already have the region source and the objects already populated. Now I need to select my policy. And as mentioned, I'm going to use the TM policy, which has a backup of every six hours and a retention of every two weeks. So we're going to select TM policy. And then I have some operations that I can perform from an extra options perspective. So if I click on more options, this gives me a different window that allows me to uh, determine if I want to set the SLAs to a different backup type or a different window regarding how long it takes to back up so that I can get alerts if the backup is taking too long. Um, also, we have some additional settings. So say whether or not I want an end date or, uh, or to exclude some disks. Um, we also have the ability for app consistent backups. So for work, a workload such as like Microsoft SQL Server to keep from uh, losing any important data and uh, quiet times to make sure that it actually cancels the runs at quiet times um, when they start. Uh, there are some extra options you can enable, but in most cases, it's relatively easy to just go through this particular workflow and then just click the protect button. So I'm over here on the activity screen now at this particular point, I'm getting a listing of all the activity that's happening in our particular environment for the last 24 hours. Uh, it's taking some time right now to aggregate the particular data. So what I'm going to do here is switch over to the vCenter view and see if anything has started from a data protect as a service perspective. So I don't see anything running quite yet. So let's go back over to the Helios screen. And what we can see is if we look over a timeline of what has occurred in the past 24 hours, you can see various workloads like Microsoft Exchange, uh, mailboxes, and some other VMs from other regions. So you can see some of our Canadian VMs that have been backed up down here. Um, we can take a look in varying degrees of different backups that have occurred within our particular environment. So quite a bit of Microsoft 365 Windows workloads are being backed up. So let's go ahead and do a quick refresh. And as we can see here that our WinApp servers have attempted to start their backup window. Let me do a refresh on our vCenter. Uh, it doesn't look like we've attempted to request anything quite yet. Um, Sometimes when you're initiating connections from the cloud, your mileage may vary regarding the overall speed of the, the first initial connection coming through. Uh, so we're here back on the data protect as a service activity window. And so we can see the backup tasks and I could show you the activity as, a, as it's occurring. So if I go ahead and click on one of these running tasks, So we can see that we've started the activity from an online perspective and the, re the requested backup task has uh, begun. So we're just waiting for the SAS connector to communicate data to be streamed from this particular devices. Let's see, as we wait for the snapshots to start, uh, we, can initiate, uh, we can initiate a restore. So now uh, I'm going to be going back to my dashboard. So let's get, let's clear out of here and go back to dashboard. And I'm going to go ahead and click recover in the upper right hand corner. And at the same time, I'm going to pick a particular VM. And in this case, I'm going to pick one of my, uh, 
servers beginning with DMAS, D M A A S, and enter. And as you can see, I've got five devices here that I'm working with in this particular region. Uh, I'm just going to select one of the VMs to recover, and then we'll see the recover options on the right up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick, we'll just go ahead and pick 72 and So you can see that I've got the five VMs that I'm working with in this particular region, and I've selected this one uh, DMAS72 uh, server. So we've recreated the backup snapshot through the SAS connector, and now what we wanna do is take that data, that snapshot information, and bring it into the SAS connector and direct it up into our data plane inside of Helios. Okay, now what we've got to do in this particular, with this particular virtual machine is perform a recovery. And to do that, we need to click the three dots. And this will give us the ability to recover through Helios. So I'm going to go ahead and click recover. And then I'll go, I'm going to go ahead and choose new location. And I'm going to choose the same vCenter. But I'm also I'm going to select a resource pool, and then I'm going to choose the data store. Uh, for this one, we're going to use our dim pure array, and then I'm going to choose the folder we're going to recover this to. We're going to attach the network. We're going to go ahead and choose the network that we want to attach it to. And we're going to have this startup connected. Um, and then next, uh, the rename, we're going to leave the copy prefix for this, uh, for this particular job. Uh, we're going to have the power state as on. So when it's done restoring, it will power it on automatically. Um, we're going to leave the task name as this uh, recover with the uh, date and time. And so now what I'm going to do is we're going to click the uh, recover button and the initiation uh, should begin. So you can see now that my demo restores and that we've recreated a virtual machine uh, from the data in question. We're getting the rest of the data copied over. And so we've reconfigured the virtual machine to make it available. So we're here at the activity and let's see how far along we've got. So let me do a refresh and we can see that the recovery is still running. And so what we'll do is go ahead and click on the recovery task and we'll take a look at the copies to be written. We'll click on the recovery task here and let's take a look at the copies of the data to be written here. Okay. And so we're in the midst of streaming that data over and it'll take a bit for that to happen, but you can see that the device is receiving that particular data. And once it's done, we'll, uh, we'll it, the virtual machine will power on. So let's go back over. We'll close out of this. We'll go back over to the, activity window and then we'll go over to vCenter. So over here in the vCenter window, we've the snapshots are finished for those Windows devices and we've got quite a bit of operations that have been happening with our SAS connectors trying to take care of all this data being moved between here and Helios. So what we'll do here is we'll go back to the activity window. All right, we can see here that these particular processes finish from their backup perspective. So we did backup uh, win app three and four utilizing the TM policy uh, that initial backup takes some time as we were, were streaming in this particular case, 60 gigs of data initially across that particular wire. It took a little bit to go through, but we're, uh, 
we can also see that the recovery operation is finished. And if we go over to vCenter and we do a refresh, we can see if that system is powered on. Let's do a refresh. And it is indeed powered on and is available. So if we go back over to the activity window, we could see that these didn't take that long to finish. So uh, the backups took about five minutes a piece. And then that recovery of that 60 gig uh, virtual machine only took about less than six and a half minutes uh, to get that back down to the localized environment. So with that being completed, that is the demo uh, for today.